Hey everyone, it's a super exciting day. I finally finished 3D printing the latest revision of my vacuum bed, my stencil printer, and I'm going to build my very first panel of I2S audio shields. I'm going to do it all on video from start to finish, so you can follow along, see the results. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if the vacuum bed's going to work or not. We'll find out, won't we? Let's go. I've got my stencil sitting on here. As you can see, I've got my vacuum bed underneath. You can now understand why I've got this really awkward angle shape that connects to the vacuum cleaner because I need it to clear the edge of the stencil. And this section here is actually five or six millimeters thicker than the maximum height I've got underneath the stencil. So it has to come out the side like that. The good news is my hose now goes around the back. Now I've got my I2S audio shield on here and it's sitting in the holder for it. I have actually aligned the stencil already but I've put no effort into getting it flat on the PCB. It's at the, roughly the right height but there's quite a bit of give in here. More than I would accept if I wasn't using a vacuum system. I've got a lot of LED lighting around me that I normally use for working on this. They're not set up for filming, they're set up for being able to see detail in the stencil. And I've also got this ring light with magnifying glass and what I would normally do if I'm lining up a stencil is I get right in, excuse the creaking, and I'd be checking all of the alignment and then using the controls on the side of the stencil printer or at the front down here to adjust everything. It actually looks pretty good to me. So alignment wise I think we're right. You can clearly see from the footage right now that I'm not even close to being on the board. You can see the gaps. I can't really capture too much. I'm going to put paste back here. You probably won't see me do it, although you'll see the reflection of me do it, which is cool. I'm obviously going to put the paste down first before I turn the vacuum cleaner on, and then hopefully when I lift it up again, you'll be able to see the results okay. Very hard to light this area. The stencil's blocking a lot of the light, but hopefully you'll be able to see some interesting results. And once this is done and I take the panel off, I'll give you a much closer look under the microscope. So let's do this. Here we go. Vacuum time. off and lift and there we go you would have seen me check the pads before I lifted the stencil to make sure that there were no pads that I missed I can already see that there's an issue here with some smudging but only here and I think I know why that's where I've got the little inset to lift it up and because of that little inset to lift it up there was probably some air coming through but other than that the rest of this looks perfect so let's pull it off and look under the microscope. Here is the panel. Once again, quite hard to light this under a microscope, but if I get to the first board, if you look at that, that is smack on, and the pads look fantastic. The paste on the QFNs is actually correct. I have slightly underexposed apertures on the QFN because these bridge quite easily, and I can never 100% be sure that JLC PCB will stick their solder mask between my pads so it's much easier to slightly underpaste them and not have bridges than it is to fight an issue with solder mask. But that actually looks spot on and if I move across the whole board it looks really really even. Now considering this is the very first time I've pasted this board, never used a stencil before, it really is a great job. It's as good as I'd ever want to get my paste if I wasn't using the vacuum system. But it would normally take me many more tries to get this. And if the stencil wasn't sitting perfectly on the PCB, then many of the QFN pads would have actually not pasted and they would have lifted the paste back up again. 
Now, the only issue, as I mentioned, was this bit of smudging just here. I'm pretty sure that's because of where I stuck the little thumb thing, and it was kind of stupid of me to put it here. In hindsight, I should always stick them on the sides where I've got edge rails. That way I can always guarantee that there won't be a problem with paste being too close to it. So I'm not 100% sure if this issue here was just that the stencil wasn't stuck down properly, but that's a really minor thing. And to be honest with you, that's gonna reflow fine anyway. And if not, I can just put some flux on there and I can clean that up. But if you look everywhere else on the board, it is spectacular. Time to put this in the pick and place machine and build my first panel of I2S audio shields. I don't have a conveyor at the entry point of my pick and place at the moment because I have no space on this side, unfortunately. If I ever find some space, I'll definitely stick a convey here. But for now, I just grab the panel that I just pasted, line it up, and pick and place eats it. Okay, everything's ready to go. I'm about to run this. It's not optimized yet because I've not run this panel before. This is the very first time I'm running this board. I'm gonna run it at 80% and see how we go. So as you can see, there's a lot of back and forward movement where it's not collecting the parts in the correct order. That's me, I haven't optimized it yet. I could remove a lot of that side to side travel by optimizing the different pickup order. But for now, I just want to get a board filled. pick up the speaker. Cover tape is jammed. I'm just going to fix this. Okay, here we go. So these are all the joyous things that they don't tell you about when you pick and placing. So you get a pick and place machine, you think it's going to be super smooth, you just get everything aligned and off you go. But the cover tape on the speakers is really sticky. It's got really bad glue on it. And so every 10 or 15 speakers it pulls out of the tape when it's feeding it, the cover tape gets stuck to the cog that advances it. And it gets jammed and it won't advance anymore. So 90% of the time that I'm in here fixing problems with the pick and place machine during a run is because of something to do with the part rather than something to do with the pick and place machine. Uh, the cover tape snaps because it's really bad quality plastic or the glue is too strong and it won't pull it off or it's really sticky and it gets jammed. Place trying to feed the next board, can't find it, and off it goes. Now I'm going to 
slow this down and stop it on the conveyor and the reason is there's two components I have to hand place one of them is the switch second one is I thought I had 10 nanofarad capacitors in 0402 seems I ordered 0603 instead so I need to hand place 0402 10 nanofarad caps from a small run of tape that I've got so let's take the board off carefully and take it to the desk okay well for the first run it's not terrible I uh, have a few alignment problems that's okay I didn't do a dry run I didn't get a board and cover it with tape and do a dry run as you can see here we've got some issues with the little blue LED and the PAMs are sticking over a little bit it can be fixed it'll probably reflow fine anyway that'll probably pull across so I need to put a switch here and let me just show you the switches come on tape but there's no place to pick them up so there's a stalk there so I can't pick it up here and if I pick it up there there's no flat surface this air is going to get sucked through if I pick it up on the edge over here the nozzle won't be strong enough to hold it without this spinning around so I don't understand why they deliver these on tape I bought a reel of them and I can't pick and place them very frustrating I'm not going to place all of these now but I'm just going to show you what I need to do to finish the board so as you can see I've got the one here these are vertical switches they've got the same mount as what I've used before but it's a vertical switch I don't have any room to put one as a horizontal and the other thing I need to do as I mentioned is place some 10 nanofarad caps which silly me I ordered the wrong ones this is the size I need so everything else on the board looks pretty good and as I said the paste is really consistent Hard sockets, are some some straight, some seem a little bit wonky. As you can see, that pad where it was smeared a bit, they're just on the feet of the SD card, so I think they're going to be fine. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of this together and stick it in the oven. So I'm going to very carefully get it back onto the conveyor. and I'm going to trigger it and off it goes now the super long slow journey through the reflow oven takes about six and a half minutes to go the full length of the oven and this is where it'll come out the other end when it's done and fall into this tray There it is! And there we have it! And here's the final panel after reflow. It's come up really well. Now I'm glad I finally got to show the process of mine from start to finish, pasting, paste inspection, pick and placing and reflow to show you all what's involved with me making my boards. Normally I would make more than one panel at a time, I'd make five or ten, but for this particular process I wanted to try out the backing bed and see if the latest revision I made is working okay. Well, it still needs a few tweaks, but so far I think it's looking really, really promising. I'm excited to say that I am now officially releasing my I2S Audio Shield. The link is in the description below. If you want to grab yourself one, you can. Hopefully I'll have some of these out to my resellers in the future as well. But for the moment, you need to grab one from me. And uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. I also have a patron. If you'd like to back me on Patreon, please check the link below. And until next time, catch you later. Bye.